My question to the teacher is that how do you know whether you have to use the F or P formula? It's how not. Freedom, thank you so much for your question. And Freedom asked the question, he said, how do you know whether you have to use the F or P formula? These are both financial statistic formulas and you will need to know where to use them. But this depends on whether the question is about saving or repaying a loan, all right? Now the F formula, um, is the value for an investment in the future. So just think if, think investment in the future. Um, and whereas the P formula is the formula for a loan. So it is more present. It's what you're trying to save up right now, not investing for later. <laughs> okay. Remember that you will be given the correct formulas in the test. You need to know which formula to use. You need to know how to use your question uh, correctly in order to use the formula. Um, correctly all right so those are important both of these formulas are for monthly payments keep that in mind okay now the formula for loan calculations present loan calculations is P is equal to X square bracket 1 minus open brackets 1 plus I close brackets the power of N square brackets over I okay it makes sense when you actually have a question to plug into the, the formula Okay, P is your present value of the loan. Now remember we spoke about the F statistic, that is for future, that's for investment. P is for loans and it's for the present value as the P stands for. Mm. X is the fixed monthly payment, which is also known as an installment, what you're paying monthly to pay off the loan. I is the interest rate per annum written as a decimal. This interest rate is done per, per month, but it is written as, as a decimal. And N is the number of months you have to pay off the loan. All right, so it's a time period, but it's a time period in months when we're dealing with the P formula. Cool. The formula used for saving a fixed annual monthly is F is equal to X, square brackets one plus I, close brackets to the power of N, minus one, square brackets over I. This is your F formula. It is used for future investments. Okay, cool. F is, stands for the future value of the investment, what you're investing. X again is your fixed monthly payment, your installments, what you're paying every month. I is your interest rate per month. This is also written as a decimal. Uh, again, you will be given a number in percentage. You will then divide by 100 and that gives you your decimal. But you will be writing it as monthly. And N is the number of months you are saving for. Remember, it's a time period, but with these formula, it's your time period in months. Okay. So the best option when it comes to personal finance, guys, is to pay cash. Because what you'll find is when you use these formulas and you plug in all your values and you plug in what you actually meant to pay and you plug in those interest rates and those time periods, you have an inflated amount at the end Then you're almost paying close to double the amount that you were meant to pay. So they trick you and they say, yeah, take it over five years. <laughs> but in actual fact, in five years, you could have bought two of those. Okay, investing a fixed monthly, just some terminology, investing a fixed monthly um, amount is called an annuity, all right? In some cases, you may choose to make a payment in other time periods, such as every three months, um, quarterly, um, but monthly contributions are usually the norm. Okay, should we look at an example? Tabu wants to buy a taxi that costs 130,000 Rand. Instead of borrowing the money, he decides to invest the money monthly. He invests 2,800 Rand a month for five years at a 7.9% um, interest. Uh, how much money will he have available to buy the taxi? So I always, always say, guys, it is so important to read your question because from reading your question, you now know what formula to use and you have all, all the values to plug into that formula so you can get full marks for this question either way, okay? We, they said that he, wants to, he decides to invest the money. That, that tells us it is future, and that tells us we are using our F formula. They give us the, money, the price of the taxi, they give us the time period, they give us the monthly period, and they even give us the uh, interest. So the monthly period, we take out those variables, and then we know how and where to plug them in. The monthly period is 2.8 thousand rand. 
The interest rate was 7.9%. Remember I said we want that in a decimal, so we're gonna divide it by 100. That will give us 0.079 per annum, which we are then going to further divide by 12 because we are dealing with months and there are 12 months in a year. We're doing it monthly, so our interest rate we are dividing by 12, getting it, uh, given that fraction. And we, they did say that the time period is over five years, which we are now going to multiply by 12. We want to know, um, N, remember, was the number of time period in months. So we want to know how many months he's paying this off. So five times 12, that gives us 60 months. We have everything to plug into our formula. So from here, it's really easy. Our F, we have our F formula, which is over there, and we just plug in. We saw that X was 2,800, we're gonna plug in over there. Open brackets one plus, I would suggest working these out before you put them into the formula. So 0 0.079 divided by 12. Get your full answer, don't round off, get your full answer. Um, put it into the calculator. Uh, close brackets to the power of 60, because that was a time period by number of months, by the number of years minus one over again your interest rate over your time over your monthly amount so that's again 0.079 over 12 and that gives you 205,000 rand and 99 rand 205,199 and 82 cents he's paying a lot more than what the original price of the taxi which was what 130,000 rand makes you question so if the inflation rate over the five years is an average of 6.8% per annum, five years, how much will the same taxi cost? Okay, they're asking if there's an inflation rate over five years to a 6.8% per annum, how much will the taxi cost? This question again gives us a tip because if we see inflation rate, we know that we're using our compound interest, okay? And the formula for compound is used. So P is our initial amount, which they gave us, which is the price of the taxi. It was 130,000 Rand. I was that the interest rate, which was 6.8% per annum. Again, we put it in our decimal form, divided by 100, and that gives us 0 0.68. And N was five years. We are here using the compound interest, so we're not using the amount of years in months. We just give it, plugging the interest, the amount of years just in the full decimal of years. So it's 130,000 Rand, 1 plus 0 0.68, which we divided by um, 100, to 5, which is the power of years, and that gives us 180,000 Rand. 634 and five thousand and five cents. So if you invest the money and inflation is at the rate calculated in the example, you will have more than enough money to buy the taxi in five years. So maybe investing is a better option. My question to the teacher is, when you know the amount you want to borrow, how do you calculate the monthly amount? Thank you so much for your question. What will I do without these guys? Hey, if you know the amount you want to borrow, how do you calculate the amount the amount is is what the question was let's look at this so you will use the, the formula for present value because you are borrowing and you know what you're borrowing so you'll use the present value you're not investing for the future you'll then just substitute the values in and then solve for the equation because you have the present value we now need to know what the monthly amount is so you're going to solve for the equation which is what we're going to look at an example of but alternately you may be given the equation in the correct format, um, which I think is somewhat highly unlikely, but it's good to look at, which is x is equal to pi over square brackets 1 minus open brackets 1 plus i, close brackets to the power of n uh, square brackets. What you would most likely have to do is solve the equation and just solve for the missing variable is basically what we're going to look at. So let's look at an example. Tabo wants to buy a taxi for 130,000 Rand. The finance company requires Tabo to pay a 12% deposit and charges him 16.3% per annum for the balance of the loan. He must pay the loan back over five years, determine his monthly repayments. Again, look at your question, pick out the variables, and now we can solve. Let's put it into our present formula. Okay, so they said that he is required to pay a 12% deposit. So that we are going to take off the original amount. 12% of 130,000 Rand is 15,600 Rand. You can work out those values on your calculator. 
quite simply. So we're going to, what is the deposit? We're going to then take that off of our original value, um, original cost, which was 130,000 Rand, minus the 12% deposit, which was 15,000 Rand and 600, 15,600 Rand. <laughs> that gives us P equal to 114,000 Rand 400. So that is what he has to now pay. And now we need to work out the interest rate over that amount over five years it was. But they are asked us in the question, how do we work out the monthly calculation? So we know that our interest rate was 16.3% per annum. We put that into a decimal by dividing by 100. Um, we are dealing with months here, so we are putting that decimal that we have over 12, because they are 12 months in a year. Um, they told us that it is, would be paid over five years. We are dealing with months, so we need to know how many months he has to pay and what the monthly requirement would be, monthly payment would be. So we would say five times by 12, that gives us 60 months. Now let's look at our formula. Our formula is for the present value for loans is P is equal to X, um, uh, square brackets 1 minus up brackets 1 plus I close brackets to the power of negative M um, square brackets over I. Okay, we have most of those values so we're going to plug that in. We just don't have that X. So we plug that in, um, we solve for the values on the right and then we have something that looks like this. So we're almost there but we need to get that X on its own. How do we do that? We move the 40,000 over to the left hand side but what are we doing with it on the left hand side? We are going to now divide it. Once we put it over uh, or under the 114,400, 114,400, my goodness, 114,400 Rand over 40.853, um, that we work out and that is then equal to that missing variable that we were looking for, which was 2,825 cents. And that is our monthly amount that he will have to pay for.